Okay, we had our first clog with the uh, guider two, so that's disappointing, but it had to happen eventually. So these are some little rocks that I'm printing for my uh, uh, Sabak dealer block. This is available on Etsy store. Uh, this is for playing Sabak, which is Star Wars poker, and it has three rounds. Each hand has three rounds, so you keep track of the rounds this way. Put the cards on top here, and the dice go in here. So. Anyway, we print these out a bunch at a time, and this one started pretty fine, but then about uh, two-thirds of the way through, I uh, started having extrusion problems. You can see the print failed, so that's always annoying, but it's going to happen. So with the NX, I found I needed to uh, uh, change the heat break tube about every uh, 60 days. So it's... I, I kind of lost track, unfortunately, on this one. I I had I had a reminder set up in a couple weeks to change it, but I'm not exactly sure if it was 60 days or not. So I'll still be uh, working on figuring out what the number is. But I was printing a lot of uh, PETG, which is higher temperature. So the PLA I'm printing like this. I'm printing at uh, 225, and the PETG I'm printing at 237. So this is what the heat break nozzle looked like when I pulled it out. Now the end is all squished because uh, when you pull it out, I use my uh, my tweezers and um, I mean my uh, needle nose pliers, and I had to squish it to pull it out. So, but you can see it's pretty pretty well uh, burned there, so, and there was filament built up in the end, so that's what causes extrusion problems. So, nozzle can be clogged up, but in my experience, the heat break tube and the interface between the heat break tube and the uh, let's use this clean one. And the nozzle, there was a, the, this nozzle inserts into the, uh, I mean, the heat break tube fits into the nozzle, but at the bottom, there's a little, you know, there's going to be a minor gap there or some kind of uh, space where uh, filament can accumulate, and uh, that can cause clogging. So eventually, you got to replace this. Like I said, I'm printing 10 to 15 hours a day, seven days a week, six, seven days a week. So that equals about uh, 600 hours for a couple months. So, um, that's, that's if you've seen that in my uh, previous video. That, that's what I was using for the NX, and it worked pretty well. Although I'm thinking if I'm printing a lot of PETG, I, I did print probably a couple weeks of PETG, and I think that prematurely uh, uh, caused this to uh, clog. So, in any case, uh, normally in the past, I've just been buying new uh, nozzles. They're not super expensive. Uh, these are the micro Swiss ones. I like those because they have really uh, good tolerances. They're nickel plated. I'm not printing anything fancy like uh, uh, carbon fiber or other uh, wood or anything that has uh, extra fibers in it that is really going to affect it. But I just found they work better than these brass nozzles. Here's a brass nozzle. Mainly because the uh, because the uh, nozzle uh, diameter is just more accurate with this one because it's, it's, it costs more, it's machined better, and so forth. So I have used brass nozzles that are cheaper, but since I'm making stuff for sale, I, I, I just want things to work reliably, you know. I don't really care. I, mean, as, as I, I can afford to buy nozzles, but I don't, don't like to waste money, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to start cleaning these nozzles so I can reuse them, and then eventually I'll have to replace them, but I should be able to last a lot longer. So this is a brand new nozzle. And if we put the flashlight on it, hopefully you can see in there. The bottom is uh, all nice and shiny silver. Now, if we look at the nozzle that I took out of the out of the printer, it looks like a black hole. So there's all sorts of uh, po polymerized uh, filament in there, and so it's all black. So we're going to try to get that filament out. We we'll use a couple different tools and uh, see how that works. What we're going to be using to clean the nozzle is a uh, end mill for a uh, milling machine. So I'll put links to these. I got these on Amazon. This is an end mill that uh, has a flat top and it's 0.4 millimeters in diameter, which is the inside diameter of this uh, nozzle. So what we do is we put it in here and we twist it around and the flutes or the uh, cutting uh, flutes, I think they're called flutes, cutting flutes on this uh, end mill are going to scrape out the inside of this uh, nozzle and um, uh, get the uh, 
the uh, filament that's that's remaining in there out. So I'm going to show you how I set that up in the vise because it's easier to work on. I could turn it here, but this is kind of small and uh, slippery, so I'll show you how I set it up in the vise and then I'll. All right, so this is my bench vise, four inch vise. Use it for all sorts of things. Now it's got these little uh, cutouts here for. Uh, that are really handy for putting in uh, circular stock. So the biggest one is just the right diameter for this thing. So then now this is sturdy. Now I can now I can twist this, which is a bigger diameter. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, easier to turn. So I just need to turn this. I, don't know if, I turn it in both directions. I think this is the cutting direction. So all right. So that got some of it out. Let's look at the uh, look at this more closely. You can see there's all sorts of uh, filament coming up. That's the I was putting a lot of P black PETG. So yeah. So let's uh, do this some more. Let's see if we can get the inside of this uh, nozzle cleaned out. All right, so I spent a couple minutes uh, twisting this back and forth, and occasionally b uh, blowing off the uh, end mill to get the filament off, and also blowing into this thing <laughs> to get the filament, the, any residual filament here. So take a look. It's not um, it's not uh, you know pristine, uh, but the sides are kind of gray now instead of like a black hole. So the other thing we need to do is at the bottom of this. The um, just like this is tapered into a cone. Bottom of this is has a slight cone shape at the bottom, is my understanding. So we're gonna use a different mill to get that bottom as clean as we can, because that's that's where the all the action happens down at the bottom of this of this uh, nozzle. All right, so here's the other end mill we're gonna use. This is tapered, so again I'll have a link to this in the uh, description. So it's a carbide end mill, and this has a slightly smaller diameter. So I'm gonna use the smaller hole. On my uh, bench vise, so you can see the end of it is tapered. Let's just show that better. You see, the end of this is tapered, so that'll get down to that uh, uh, cone-shaped area at the bottom of the uh, nozzle. So we'll put this in the bench vise again. We'll take our nozzle, and we'll just do the same thing. This is getting that little. The last little bit there that's right up against where the nozzle, the uh, point, uh, point 0.4 millimeters starts, and uh, I'm trying to get that as clean as possible. All right, let's check our flashlight again. Yeah, it's probably a little hard for you to see, but um, at the very bottom of the uh, the very bottom of the nozzle there, that's uh, you can see a little bit of silver, so it's pretty it's pretty clean. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll um, get our, our new heat break tube, and we'll put this in the machine, and we'll give it a try, and we'll see how it extrudes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out and keep looking up.